What's up painting friends? It's Stoof here. Welcome back to my channel. As the spring season is coming back, so is the game of golf in the United States. And we've got some big tournaments coming up. So I'm going to do a tutorial on a golf course landscape painting today. We're using acrylic paint on an 8 inch by 10 inch canvas panel today. My colors are listed in the description under this video, um, but quickly we'll go through them again. We have titanium white, crimson, azurite blue, thalo blue, thalo green, vivid lime green, cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, brilliant blue, terra verde, magenta, dioxazine purple, and burnt umber. We also have a cup of water. We have some Viva paper towels for cleaning off our brushes. And for our brushes today, we're going to have a couple different brushes. Uh, we have this number 14 flat tip brush. We have a number eight flat tip brush here. Um, also going to possibly use this number six filbert brush. And maybe we'll go with a uh, number four flat tip brush. And then we'll use one liner brush for the flag pin. To get started, I'm just dipping my brush. I'm dipping my number four flat tip brush in the water to get started. We're just gonna sketch out the concept, get a little bit of blue on here, and let's put a little dot where our center line is. And we have just above center is where our tree line is. I guess the uh, where the ground meets the trees kind of dips down a bit here. And then the actual tree line is about this tall. We have some cypress trees up there, so a little bit of light's going to peek through some of those trees. And then down here, there's like no light peeking through at all. And then as we're moving closer, I want to get this next line. It's about here. And it kind of goes up very gently on the slope. We've got some mulched area here, some landscaping, some azalea bushes in here. And we've got like a bigger tree line about here. So this is also helping to create the sense of depth and distance. Got two trees here. And got a little line for like a fairway back in there. A little bunker in there, another bunker there. Got a bunker right here. Another one kind of hiding in there. This bunker doesn't quite come out that far. And we've got another little patch of landscaping in there. This little patch of landscaping is right here. Got another round of trees right here. Okay, I may have made this line a little bit too low, so I'm gonna pick that up a little more. And this tree line is a little bit taller than that tree line, a little higher up. And then we've got our green, which has quite a hill. <laughs> this will be a really tricky one. Got another little hill right here. And we got another hill like right here too. 
All right, so that's the general concept. Now we're gonna take our number 14 flat brush and we're gonna work on the sky. We're gonna mix some white with our brilliant blue and some dioxazine purple. A little magenta too. Let's put that right at the top. A little more brilliant blue, white, more magenta. Get a little bit more yellow in there too. going back and forth, really blending well. I'm gonna get the extra brush, extra paint off my brush, take some more white, some ochre, and magenta. Put this right here, and then blend this up. Just some white right at the bottom here. Trying to keep it nice and light. Maybe mix a little bit of yellow right above there. And I'm covering up a lot of the trees that I had in here, but that's okay because we know where they are. We'll put them back. It's better to do it this way and then just layer over, put some trees over your sky, than to leave that void space and try to match the same color. To your sky. This adds a little more pink, a little more magenta. It's coming back and forth. All right, that looks good. We're gonna let that sit and dry for a bit and just block in some base color down here. So I'm gonna take my Terra Verde with my Thalo Green and some red and some Vivid Lime Green and some Ochre and some Brilliant Blue. We'll do a little bit of white as well and put this right here. Maybe a little more terra verde just to mute that color down a little bit. Could take some azurite too. That'll really help mute that color down. Bring the value down a little too. Add some more phthalo green and burnt sienna. And then we need phthalo green, lots of ochre, and phthalo blue, and umber for right here. Add more phthalo blue. It's really dark at the bottom. And then we're going to add some yellow and magenta 
and azurite and some white right here got this little hill that's getting some light just going back and forth and if you make this arc shape with your brush brush strokes then you'll get that hillside look as well your colors and your brush strokes got to be right here for it to show that you have a hill and we can layer up a little bit more white the top point of this hill and then there's like a little bit of a later section there too all right that looks good take a little more of our brilliant blue with white just add more of that or azurite blue even with a little more magenta we really lose that green back here it becomes more of like a faded uh, like there's a frost on the grass so you kind of get more of that color kind of lose the green mixing a little bit of purple in here Get a little more of that warm green, the very edge of the putting green. Just make sure you're really covering up all the white space on the canvas. All right, I'm wiping off the excess paint, taking some yellow, white, and ochre, and a little bit of crimson. There's a section here where some lights coming in and we're gonna brighten this up more with some layering later but for now we'll just get that color in there I can make it a little lighter then we wanted that to kind of fade into this color and then we're gonna take more azurite brilliant blue and thala green magenta we're going for more of a bluish green in the far background. Can add more white, a little bit of ochre. green and a little more thalo over there it's a little darker Make some more white yellows Let's brighten this up again. Just show a little bit of light peeking through here. And we'll take more of our yellow ochre, some terra verde, and vivid lime green and thalo green. And that'll be a nice color for our putting green. Just gonna add a little more vivid lime green and my phthalo green and some umber the foreground part of the putting green here maybe some more yellow as well a 
by adding a little more umber here, we're showing that we have a little bit of a very uh, soft shadow because it's just like this side of the putting green is not quite as bright from the natural light. Got a little bit of a shadow here from a little roll in the slope. And then we've got, I'm gonna take the extra paint off the brush. Let's add some white and a little more yellow right here. Maybe just white and um, light blue too. Yeah, let's see how that goes. And I'm working pretty quickly, letting these colors that are still wet on the canvas blend together to get this nice smooth transition of color. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this bright color with the blue right there and then mix a little bit of green in there. Mix a little bit more vivid lime green right here. And we'll take some brilliant blue with some phthalo green and white for a little highlight on the slope right there. And it kind of keeps going a little ways behind that. Mix in a little more, some umber too. We'll just darken this down a little bit, mute it down. A little more purple and phthalo. More of that lighter color over here. And there's just a couple little sections where some lights kind of peeking through in the background too. And we'll take more of our ochre right there. It's really warm. And we'll put away the big brush for now. Go to our number six filbert brush. And let's just quickly uh, block in our little landscaping areas. So I'm gonna take some of my burnt sienna with phthalo blue and a little crimson over here. Starting with like the darker value then we can add some lighter value, just more of the burnt sienna color right here when we have a little bit more color visible. And mix in a little more brilliant blue for this one over here. We don't have quite as much, whoa, we don't have quite as much color. It's lighter in value and less saturated. Mix a little more white in there. It's a little more saturated right there and warmer because the light's touching that section. Let's 
it's gonna lighten up a little bit here too. And then I need more of my darker greens. So phthalo green with some umber and some burnt sienna. Just gonna get this here. Got a little line where the rough meets the fairway. Just dipping this in the water a little so I can get a nice smooth line there. And we've got some lighter greens and warmer greens right back here. Our white in here where we have some highlights. I'm gonna mix in more yellow and ochre. Just a little on the green here. Vivid lime green too, just to keep boosting this color. All right, we'll take our crimson with some ultramarine and that'll get our nice little azaleas that are in shadow, blocked in. Mixing in a little phthalo, purple, umber, more phthalo green. It's getting a dark neutral color. Since I didn't put black on my palette, I'm just trying to make like dark neutral colors for some of these sections here. I'll mix some white with our crimson, a little magenta, and we can add a little color in there. Okay, and just cleaning off that brush. We're gonna switch to the number eight flat tip brush. And I'm just gonna really quickly and gently block in like the colors for the tree line. But first we're gonna start with some white and ochre and crimson. Just mix those together and just kind of brush in some of that color because it's kind of like like the lights on the other side of these trees. And by just adding a little bit of this color, it's gonna help look like there's light on the tree leaves. We have these two trees right about here too. We want these ones to have some of that yellow color. All right. That's good. And then we'll take our Vivid Lime Green with Thalo and Magenta and Umber, or Burnt Sienna and some white. A little more Sienna. And we're just gonna like really push the brush around on the canvas, so it, on the palette so that it gets kind of a little frayed looking and then just very gently dab and this will create like the tree branches look. You can add a little more uh, magenta here too if we want. Just warming it up a little bit. And you don't want this to be too dark in value, so if you think it's looking too dark, just add some white to it and that should help. And you want your tree branches to mostly cover up the 
uh, golden color we put down first, but it, not 100% covering it, but covering most of it, so just a little bit's kind of peeking through there. And a little more magenta as I'm moving over here. And you can kind of just like fuzz together a little bit if it looks too patchy. Like you want it to still kind of look like you got some trees here. Maybe a little bit more blue. And as we get over here, we definitely have more blue visible. Add some of that brilliant blue. And like brilliant blue with some phthalo blue and some purple is a pretty good color for down here. Maybe mix a little crimson in there too. Let's get a little more on the purple side. I could do some phthalo with white, a couple highlights in there, get some magenta too. Then you add some highlights, just very gently holding the brush. You can mix a little bit of our phthalo green in and lime green. Go back to our blues with magenta. A little bit darker down here towards the bottom of the tree line. Let's put that brush away. Use the liner brush for a couple things in the background here. Just make some white with our brilliant blue. Use the lighter colors and just get a nice little tree line again now that we've shown where those trees are. Can add a couple little subtle highlights. More azurite blue over here. Good, for the bunkers, we're gonna mix white with azurite. Want to be lighter though. Just a little bit of azurite. And you can mix a tiny bit of phthalo blue in there too, I think, cause just the azurite's just a little too, uh, warm. Let me try a brilliant blue. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, we got one bunker. The other one we can't really see. I guess we'll put that one there. 
This one's supposed to be way farther over here. <laughs> There we go. I'm just going to clean this up. Go back to these ones over here. And just take a little bit of my darker green, just give it a little border. Just to make those shapes look a little better. Okay, got the bunkers looking good. And do another little highlight on the fairway back here. A little more light right here. Okay, now we're ready to start adding some trees. So we're just gonna mix our phthalo blue with umber. And I mix it in the section where we already have a little bit of other color happening. Maybe a little bit more of our sienna I just put there. And you want to have a little bit of water in your paint unless you're using um, soft body paints then you might not need water. But we're just gonna drag these down. One. And that line came down just a little too far but that's okay. Over here we got some that aren't quite as tall, but they're still there. Just a bunch of little ones. And same with right up here, we got one right there and your tree trunks are going to get a little thicker as you're coming up this way they're going to get a little darker in value too so just mix more blue and umber to achieve that The lighter you press, the thinner your brush stroke will be. Keep that in mind. Got, these are cypress trees, so we've got like, you know, a little bit of fanning out at the top. And the trees there. You can add a little bit of red right here. These trunks. And we can add a little more blue with a little bit of crimson down here. These ones are in shadow, so they're a little cooler looking. Go 
And a couple smaller ones back here too. Make sure they're not all perfectly straight up and down as well. All right, and then for these guys, we're gonna use a similar to color to what we had for the background. Maybe a little more terra verte in there. And I'm just gonna create the fan. You can do the same thing with your liner brush, just pushing around until you get the shape you want for the trees. Can make it a little darker, adding more uh, green, purple, and umber. Because we need it to stand out a bit more from the background. Gonna mix a little bit of our phthalo green, umber, over here, a little bit of red. And for some shadows in there, we'll do that. And I'm kind of letting these blend up into the other colors so it's not too intense of a shadow. Just very gently pressing around so it blends in more. And then we'll take more phthalo green and some brilliant blue. Dip that in the water a bit and we can get these. Just going back and forth, making little swirling motions with the liner brush, sweeping up on the edges to show like the pine branches. Uh, we can mix a little more terra verde as we're getting higher up. And a little more umber, ochre. Got a couple little highlights on there like that too. Not a whole lot. Okay, getting the little side press needles the top. Mixing some more old, some um, phthalo blue with my umber. Do some terra verde in there too, and some sienna. Nice dark, neutral, green, cool blue color. And we've got a lot of this color up here too. We're gonna mix some crimson in there. And we'll do some more phthalo green. some crimson.
See that nice little bit of yellow peeking through there really looks good. I like that. Okay, and then I'm going to take some white with the ochre color, terra verde. It's going to give me just a couple little highlights on these branches here, just to help make them look a little bit less flat. And we'll make it a little cooler at the top, but still a lighter value, so green white got kind of blending into that down here and then we lose that green There. Just try to keep a good variety in the greens you have for your highlights. You can mix a couple brighter highlights in here too, like I'm doing right now. And then let's just take some ultramarine, or sorry, uh, thalo blue with our umber. Really darken some shadows in the tree trunks. Can make a few more tree trunks stand out in front of the branches in some spots. And it can highlight some too, just use more blue with, just make some like nice purple color here. That looks good. Okay, I'm gonna touch up this area with my yellows. those trees are kind of covered up. And take some brilliant blue and get this little line for the fairway back in there. And we gotta get these trees. And I wanna add a little dark shrub right there. Softening that up a bit. Just 
pushing this paint around a little. I'm going to take more Terra Verde and Thalo with a little yellow and umber and just darken this line here a little more too. Make that a little more defined. Add more yellow. some purple with my phthalo green down here I'm gonna switch back to my filbert brush real quick and soften that up a little all right I'm liking that I'm gonna take just some umber with my magenta or my crimson darken up the shadows there that looks better and lighten up over here And then we'll add these trees, which I can use this brush still, that's fine. Add some Terra Verde, Vivid Lime Green. And we want these to be a little higher up than the far background trees. I'm going to add a little more burnt sienna to keep the color warm. So I've used three different brushes for trees now. That's just to show you guys that it doesn't matter like exactly, like you, there's not one specific brush that can create that tree branch look, but they're all a little different. I'm gonna lighten this up a little here too. And get some more green. Umber, we're down here. More sienna too. And our phthalo blue, phthalo green. Our lighter phthalo color again. And there. Alright. Looking good. Last thing I want to do is add the pin flag. And then we're done. Actually, I think before I do that, I do want to darken this area. So I'm mixing blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and burnt umber. And we're just gonna build up a little deeper shadow here, that's all.
Okay, I'll do a little more yellow and ochre right here, just a little bit. All right, looks good. Pin flag is just going to be yellow, tiny hint of the ochre color and some white. And you want to really thin down the paint on this one. It's going to be just like making a tree trunk except more narrow. I'm going to put it right here, I think. Right here. Then we just need a little azurite because we have a little shadow. And with my signature in the lower left, we have a completed painting. Thanks for watching this tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fun painting tutorials like this one. Have a great day and happy painting.